Okay, so I picked up the iPhone 12 Pro a couple of days ago now, and what I wanted to do in this video is go out and compare the cameras on this iPhone to a real mirrorless camera. Now the mirrorless camera I'm gonna compare it to is the Canon M6 Mark II, which I'm using right now to shoot this. I'm shooting in 4K. But a lot has been said about the cameras on these new iPhones. There is some big improvements. There's a wider aperture, there's Dolby Vision, there's deep fusion across all the cameras, including the front-facing camera. And it's even been said that they are some of the best cameras in a smartphone ever. Now, I'm not too sure about that. I've never really used Google phones or Samsung phones, but on an iPhone, I'm pretty sure these are the best cameras. I came from an iPhone XR, which only obviously has one lens. So from an iPhone XR, this is a big, big jump. And I'm interested to see what you can actually get out of this. There's the LiDAR sensor as well, which is gonna be very, very helpful, especially in low light. So I'm gonna go for a walk, take some pictures and videos with the iPhone 12 Pro, take the Canon M6 Mark II as well, and then come back and compare the two and see what it is possible to get out of an iPhone now. I'm pretty excited to see what is possible because I've never used a camera like this on a smartphone. So yeah, let's head out. I don't want this video to get too technical and too specific. All I'm looking for is how to get the best possible pictures from an iPhone and compare them to the Canon M6 Mark II. Now, for ease, the iPhone definitely, definitely has it. So just pull it out your pocket, click the camera button, snap a picture, it is a hands down winner. And it's been like that for a few years, but now it's the quality of pictures you are getting from an iPhone. It is just insane. Like take this picture, I've just taken a picture of this fence post, for example, it's pointing directly into the sun. Now for an iPhone, with all the computer stuff that's going on inside it, it easily exposes for the fence post and the sky behind it. With the camera, with a real camera, you have to expose for the bright part of the sky and then hope that you've got enough to mess around with in post, enough information in that dark part of the picture that you can pull it out. It's just incredible what an iPhone does. I don't understand how it does it, but it is amazing. And I think for things like that, where you are pointing directly into the sun, it's so easy to get a picture with this. With the camera, it takes a lot more faffing around. So I'm gonna carry on, take some more pictures, take some videos as well, and see what it is possible to make with an iPhone. I genuinely think it's, it's incredible. I don't understand how it's possible. There is times when the iPhone just exposes easier than a real camera. It's crazy. It's, I don't understand it. going to be times when you can get a better shot with an iPhone than a mirrorless camera and obviously vice versa there's going to be better times to use a mirrorless camera for example when I was shooting that picture of the berries just then I used portrait mode on the iPhone it's not quite picked it up correctly you can see that it's trying but I suppose it's not really designed for that it's designed more for taking portraits of people and faces but you can see it is trying and it does look kind of good, but the Canon M6 Mark II has picked it up perfectly. It's got a nice depth of field, it's got a nice bokeh, and it's just easier to get a shot like that with a real camera because you can get the depth of field. But anyway, time to do a little video stabilization test of both these cameras. So this should be quite an interesting test because the Canon M6 Mark II has digital image stabilization. Now that is the same as what the iPhone has. The lens, however, that I'm using, the Sigma 18 to 35, does not have any image stabilization built into it. So I'm gonna switch over to the iPhone now whilst walking and see 
which has the better stabilisation. And now I'm recording a video on the iPhone whilst walking on using the wide lens. So which is better, the iPhone or the Canon M6 Mark II with a non-stabilised lens? I think the iPhone might have this one. I'm going to switch over to the ultra-wide lens to see if that makes a difference as well. And now I'm recording on the iPhone walking with the ultra-wide lens. So I think this might be even more stable than the wide lens because it has a wider field of view and that usually helps with stabilisation. So let's see, I can't tell yet because obviously I'm recording now so I won't know until I'm back. But uh, let's see which has the better stabilisation. So I've just had a very quick look at that walking stabilisation test of the iPhone footage and I already know without looking at that footage from the Canon that this footage wins hands down. The stabilisation is incredible and it's just mad that you can get that in a phone now. It'll be interesting to see what the iPhone 12 Pro Max can do because that's effectively got IBIS. Now IBIS is a stabilisation where the actual sensor inside the camera moves. You can get a little bit of warping sometimes if you vlog in on a, on a wide lens but IBIS is built into the actual camera body, it's not digital and it usually does a better job especially with photography so it will be interesting to see if that makes a difference on the new iPhone. To get IBIS in an iPhone is just mad, to get it in a camera usually to get IBIS you're looking at the Canon EOS R, R5, R6, they've got IBIS and they cost a fortune. The Sony A7S III, it's an expensive thing to get IBIS in a camera. So to have it in a phone on the Pro Max is incredible. But anyway, I know for a fact that iPhone won the stabilization test without even looking at the Canon footage. So I'm gonna head home, try and warm up because it is absolutely freezing and go and edit these photos, see what has uh, come out of both of the cameras and compare the two. Okay, I have made it back and I am halfway through editing most of the footage and I have to say I am genuinely, I'm not just saying this because everyone else says it, I'm genuinely blown away as to how good the camera on this thing is, or should I say cameras. They are genuinely incredible, especially coming from the old iPhone XR that's only got one camera and even when you're trying to vlog with it, it's not as wide as the wide on the iPhone 12 Pro and that's before the ultra wide, sorry. So the wide is wider than the wide on the XR. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I think that makes sense. I'm genuinely blown away. Portrait mode is brilliant. Now I've not tested that thoroughly. I've only tested it on a couple of objects while I was out and about. There is times where it doesn't work, like that picture of the berries, for example. It couldn't quite distinguish what was the foreground and the background, and it kind of got, got caught up in itself a little bit. But when I switched that into normal mode and I used the telephoto lens, I could get a nice depth of field from the berries and the actual background. So it, there is ways around it. It's just incredible. The, what All the software that is going on inside this thing, things that maybe mirrorless cameras or DSLR cameras don't have and you have to kind of account for that in exposure, it's just insane. It is mind boggling. I really don't understand how it works. I don't think I want to because I think it might actually break my brain, but it is phenomenal. It is incredible. And there is genuinely times where I would rather shoot with my new iPhone 12 Pro than my mirrorless Canon M6 Mark II. And that is mind boggling because that's a mobile phone. That is a dedicated camera. That is what it's designed to do. But for example, when I was shooting into the sun before, no problem. Even before taking the picture, I could see what the picture was going to look like. On a mirrorless camera, when you are shooting into the sun, you have to expose for the brightest part of that shot. Now, if that is a very bright sky, everything else is gonna be very dark as it was in that shot I took before. And you can see when you do lift the shadows up, there is a little bit of noise there, which is just not there on that. Crazy, absolutely crazy. There is still some features I've not tested out on this. I haven't tested night mode, also portrait mode in night mode, so you can test out the LiDAR. Uh, I really need to do that. I'm very excited to do that and I just 
yeah, I'm definitely 100% going to incorporate more iPhone clips into my videos because it looks incredible. The one thing I don't like about it, I don't like the microphone. I think the microphone could do with an upgrade, but you can't complain when the pictures look as good as they do. So um, yeah, definitely expect to see more iPhone footage in my videos. And that is it for this video. If you would like to see more videos on my channel, don't forget to click subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below. Come and be a part of this community say hello in the comments and all of that and I shall see you all very soon in another video.